What is up everybody? Today is pretty exciting. I have a cool video for you, but also this is my very first video in my new house. I mentioned to you guys a few weeks ago I was moving from Boise, where our office is, um, down here to St. George, Utah. Well, I have moved and this is my first video in the new house. Um, so uh, maybe I'll show you guys around a little bit later, but first we have to talk about something kind of serious. So SparkToro in conjunction with SimilarWeb did a study. What they found is in 2019, 50% of the time when somebody Googles something, you know, Google's often showing those featured snippets on the page, people are getting the information they need and they're never clicking into an organic result to one of our websites. Google's taking 50% of those and making it so nobody clicks in on a website. That is bad. But that was the 2019 data. In 2020, jumped from 50% to 65% of the time. Now, we don't need to start a political discussion about how monopolistic that is and how much Google should be regulated. Um, but it's really bad for our industry. And then something else happened. So about a year ago on this YouTube channel, this is what I said. We can't control it, like it or not, snippets are here and here to stay and they're only gonna get more. I doubt it will be long before we see more than one featured snippet on there. We certainly see lots of different features. But we're gonna see l many featured snippets on there. I said Google would be having two featured snippets before long, right? Well, it took about 10 months after I said that in the video and now, we're seeing them uh, in the wild. Maybe you've even seen it already. Double snippets on the page. That puts a pit in my stomach. All of this does. But then I learned that there's a way that this could actually work in our favor. And if you pay really close ad attention and dig way deeper into this data, it's more than what it seems. So when these articles first started coming out, I think a lot of people made some pretty broad conclusion. Blogging is dead, this is changing everything, this is why my website isn't growing, all this kind of stuff. And we saw that the story was a little bit deeper than that. So Income School does our own study. We did it, I guess it's almost 12 months old now. Um, the, we took a large data set of search queries, things that we would actually write about. It's not just random stuff. And so our data is quite a lot different than what you'll see in these articles where they're just taking click stream of just a million web users and everything they Googled and counting it. But tons of the things people Google, you know, what's the address of the local Maverick station? Well, nobody's gonna write a blog post on that. What's the weather today in St. George, Utah? Nobody's gonna write a blog post on that. So that 65% number is not totally relevant to bloggers. In fact, a giant portion of it is totally irrelevant. So now we're looking at just the type of articles that most bloggers like us would actually write about. And here, this is where it gets interesting. Last year, 11 months ago until today, we've actually seen 14% fewer snippets on these queries that we would actually write about than a year ago. 14% down. That's interesting, and we're gonna talk about why they may be going down, despite the fact that Google's really trying to expand um, the existence of featured snippets. Now, here's the next number. This is the one that, I just freak out about featured snippets and get so excited about. It's why we're talking about, like when we're talking about SEO on this channel, it is about answer targets, answer targets, answer targets. This is why. So we looked at that, that large data set and we marked every single time that the featured snippet, the, the snippet that Google chose was from an article that was not directly on point to the query. So for example, by the way, I'm buying a hot air balloon like next week. I'm super excited about it. So let's say the, the query is, how much does a hot air balloon cost, right? But the article that the snippet came from was actually about how much does a hot air balloon ride cost? 
It's not directly on point to it, but it may have two sentences that say, by the way, an air, a hot air balloon costs X, right? We call this cutting the line. It's where everybody else has written organic uh, articles. Even though yours isn't directly on point, you cut the line. What do you guys say in the UK? Do you cut the Q? Do you short the Q? You short the Q? I don't know what you guys say. You're just gonna have to tell me. We have a ton of people in, in the UK. So what we found is, 28.9% of the time that there was, there was Google grabbed a featured snippet from an article that was less on point than other articles that were the whole topic of the article was on point. Woo! That's pretty exciting, right? Incredibly exciting, right? Because now if we write in the correct way and we have multiple answer targets throughout our article, we can jump, the, we can short the queue, or I don't know what you guys say. Uh, we can cut the line in front of everybody else. That's a massive opportunity for us in blogging. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, so the next two statistics are also really interesting from our study. 71.43% of snippets held by a site last year have now changed to a new snippet owner. Whoever had the snippet last year, 71% of the time, it's somebody new this year. That's pretty cool. And then the question I had is, so is Google really just futzing with these and just moving things all around and we can't reliably keep it? Or are they just really improving their algorithms and that's why? So here's what we did. We got a panel of three people from income school. There's Anna, there's Andrea, and there's Nathan, right? And all three of them, I put up a bunch of snippets and I didn't tell them which is A and which is B. They just looked at the two snippets, one from last year, one from this year, and I just said, which is the best snippet? And they didn't know what year it was from. Well, 70.4% of the time, they said this year's snippet was better than last year's snippet. What does that mean? It means Google's getting way better at selecting what part of an article or which article is going to get the featured snippet. That's also super exciting to me uh, because it means if I do my job, I can more reliably win, right? Google isn't just gonna get it wrong. So that's pretty sweet. One last statistic, and then we gotta talk about some conclusions, some actionable stuff. 28% of snippets had an existence change between last year and this year. And now by an existence change, I mean either last year there was no snippet and this year there is, or vice versa, right? Google's getting better at deciding what the snippet is and sometimes it's just not finding what it needs. This should get you so fired up. <laughs> I mean, this should be getting you fired up about blogging. You are absolutely insane right now to be creating a blog and ignoring answer targets. We have a full course in Project 24 that's gonna walk you through everything that we learn. I hope you can see from this study, it's something that we keep our eye on, uh, that's our finger, but our, our eye on really, really closely. We are digging through this data. Every time somebody sees new snippet form or something, we're talking about it. We're wanting to take advantage of this. And so we need to be writing in every single article, multiple answer targets, things that are written in a way designed to be grabbed by Google. And as we've dug into this, we have found so many, I mean, dozens and dozens of rules, things that Google will only grab it if X, Y, or Z, and some secret words we're using that really signal what is happening. Now, if you're a Project 24 member, they, that may sound new, these secret words. That's something that we're gonna be updating probably even this week in Project 24 as we dug through this data this most recent time. Whoa, uh, some of these secret introductory words made a huge difference uh, in Google knowing what to grab. But even if you're not a Project 24 member, you really just wanna write sections that are compact and directly answer the question in just a couple sentences to make sure uh, that you're gonna be grabbed as, as the snippet. So last update on this video. Remember that study that I mentioned at the beginning of the video? Well, Google actually responded from the study that Rand Fishkin had done. And Google said, you know, this is not true at all. Actually, the truth is we're sending more traffic to organic websites today and every year than we have in previous years. 
Google's sending more clicks to actual sites like ours, right? Now, um, I don't think Google's lying about that. And in fact, even Rand's data showed that was true. But also, the part that's a little disingenuous, a lot disingenuous uh, from Google is they're taking percentage and changing that to absolute volume, right? It's not the same thing. Rand was saying that a higher percentage of clicks are staying on the SERP where the Google ads are on that page and they're not going to the individual bloggers. It's taking from independent publishers. And then what Google says is, no, we still give to independent publishers. But yeah, that's because the web is also growing and there are just more people searching every single year, especially last year where everybody was at home, right? And more people were on desktop searching rather than mobile. It ignores the fact that Google is taking a bigger bite of the pie every year. It's true. It's just the pie is growing as well. And so I don't love what Google's doing by any means. I uh, am very conservative in my views, but I absolutely believe that big tech needs to be stopped and Google is being so monopolistic. It's crazy how many industries they have just destroyed and we haven't stopped them. Now, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to get political on you. I'm just saying as a blogger watching this industry, it's pretty monopolistic. Take that for what it is, but don't let these stories scare you. Don't let that fear, uncertainty, and doubt keep you from success because often the headline is an actual reality and what we're seeing is more clicks than ever and a giant opportunity to take advantage of these uh, featured snippets because nobody in SEO is talking about answer targets. Nobody in SEO is talking about winning these featured snippets. I guess a very small fraction of people are and it's a huge opportunity.